game like that? Uh, I mean, uh, he's just battling a tough injury that he knows he's going to have when he gets hit hit in it. He knows it's going to affect him at times. So, uh, but he's a tough kid, and uh, uh, you know he, he he battles through things. You know, he's, he's been injured a little bit uh, uh, this season. But, uh, you know, if he's feeling good, if he feels good, one thing about him is he's going to give it a chance. He's going to uh, uh, get out there if he can. Ben, go ahead. Um, yeah, Bruiser, uh, obviously Antonio uh, had to play some of the point um, in the second half there Wednesday night. How, how does that kind of limit what else he can do on the floor? And, and what are some of the other options uh, if Kaysen can't go tomorrow? Uh, well, I mean, what it does is it puts his ball in, in his hands an awful lot, which, you know, people really get on top of him a little bit. But uh, he might have to do that. Again. He might have to do that again uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, so we'll see how it is. Uh, we sort of ran with this sooner group a little bit um, uh, against uh, Tennessee, uh, but we had a little bit more time to prepare. Uh, so that's the big thing right there. So right now we're just trying to figure out what we're going to do. Uh, you know, the, what's the best thing for Antonio, not only Antonio, but a do uh, for Chris and uh, and see how that goes uh, in terms of that. But we got a we got a little bit of time to prepare. So we'll try to do it the best way we can. Kristen, go ahead. Uh, hey, Bruiser, um, talking to the team the last few weeks, they really focused on that refuse to lose mantra. I'm um, just talking about how if they lose time, time has ran out on them. It's a lot easier to say that when you're winning, but after a loss like that, are they still feeling the same way and how are they uh, approaching this game on Saturday? I mean, you should, I mean, we played hard. I mean, uh, when you lose you know, a guy that pretty much has the ball in his hands 80% of the time. And uh, uh, I mean, we didn't think we played, well, I wouldn't say we, we didn't play particularly, we didn't shoot it particularly, but I still have a chance to win. Uh, like, like you said, the time just ran out. Uh, you got to give uh, uh, Vandy credit. They made the big shot at the end of the game, uh, but we fought, you know, it's hard to make that adjustment when you lose your two primary ball handlers, you don't have them for the, for the entire game, but our guys still fought. We went up, um, you know, we, we took the lead. Uh, but like I said, you got, sometimes you got to tip your hat to the other team and Vandy made a couple of plays at the end of the game and they were able to do it. But I think our team effort, I think everybody saw the team effort. It wasn't like we lost because not because of our effort. Bob Holt, go ahead. Hey, Bruiser, Nick Smith, you know, missed a bunch of games, including the game in Rupp. Now he's back. and I think this will be a sixth game back, and he seems to be getting himself back into the groove. Just what, what do you think about Nick Smith, and how do you think he changes Arkansas with him being back? Uh, well, he's a talented player. I mean, unbelievable talent. Gives him more depth. I think that's one of the biggest things. I thought one at the beginning of the year, they didn't have as much depth. So he gives him another player. And not only that, he gives him versatility. He can, he can sub for other people. Uh, so that actually adds to your depth, although you're only adding uh, one guy. Uh, he could play the point. He could play the wing. You know what I mean? So if you see they've played different lineups, they've played small, they've played big uh, since he's come back. So he's giving them some versatility uh, just because how he is as an athlete. Uh, uh, but he's been starting to play well. You know, when you're out for a long time like that and you start getting on the court, it takes you a little bit, a little bit of time, but he's starting to play pretty good for them. John Wong. Hey, Bruiser, Coach Cow has talked incessantly about just going out there, playing the game, not worrying about the score, but it turns out there's going to be a lot riding on this game. So how do you strike that balance with the guys and, and getting them to relax and, and have fun and yet uh, realize the importance of the game itself in terms of conference seating and such? I'll be honest with you, I don't think our guys even pay attention to that. Uh, this think that we just, like Cal said, you just go out and play. Don't worry about the score. Uh, if I was to go around the room and ask the guys, you know what this game means on Saturday, they'll probably say no. They just say, I know we lost on uh, Wednesday night and we're going to try to get one back. Uh, but, uh, you know, we don't harp on it as a staff. We don't sit in and talk about those types of things in meetings or anything with the with, with the players. So for us, it's about just getting back on, the, trying to get back on the winning track and, and playing the type of basketball we think we can play. Go ahead, Larry. <laughs> If Bruiser, if, if, if for some reason Kaysen cannot play, what do you kind of see for, for a do? How do you kind of adjust his role? How many minutes could, would you feel comfortable with him doing at the point? And what kind of things are you guys kind of thinking about with him? 
I know Kaysen, uh, he played in the Kentucky, uh, the, I'm sorry, the Tennessee game, but I mean, that's what, that's what you would, if you were to envision anything, you would envision that and he, in, in the Tennessee game, he played some point. We did some different things out of it uh, with him out there uh, 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 with just him, Antonio, and also uh, um, uh, Chris and, uh, and CJ. So uh, those are the type of thing we've had a little bit of experience with it. Uh, but uh, so we just try to hark back to that a little bit and put him in the best situation we possibly can. Go ahead, Bob. Hey, thanks for letting me ask all these questions. Appreciate it. Um, hey, Bruiser, Arkansas didn't play particularly well at Tennessee. A 18 point loss was their worst of the year. Uh, well, what did you see from them that game? And what are you expecting them from them on Saturday? Obviously, it's going to be a raucous crowd and, and all that. And Arkansas always, always, you know, I mean, you guys get everybody's best shot, I guess. I mean, we, you know, they, they, they beat us pretty good last time they played us. So, uh, you know, they got good athletes. Uh, like I said, we didn't, they didn't play, Nick Smith didn't play in the game that he played. So you add another good athlete there. Um, I thought we did a poor job of handling the ball. So we got to do a better job of that. Uh, that they got away from us because we turned it over a lot and not only turned it over, we turned it over for baskets. Uh, so we know we're going to have, we've been in the environment. Some of these guys were in the environment last year when we played. Uh, so, we know we're gonna have a tough team. They're they're a good team. I know they've had some some tough times out there, but you know, at any given night, their talent can uh, can be as, as good as anybody's in the league. And we know we're gonna get it, play against a team that got really good athletes. And uh, they gave us a they gave us a hard uh, time with that the first time we played them. Thanks. Go ahead, John. Uh, Bruiser, I'm not singling you out. I've asked all the assistant coaches this, but uh, we we enjoy seeing you and listening to your perspective. But Coach Cal, he used to do all of these pregame post conferences and uh, pregame conferences, and now he's he's not done any of those. Uh, do you know why that's changed? And what specifically <laughs> is your thought on being able to come out here and speak with us guys? <laughs> I, no, I don't know how it's changed since I've been here. I've been doing it. So I don't know what the change was. That's that's something you probably have to ask him. Uh, but uh, I mean, I don't I, I was a head coach for 20 years. So getting in front of the media is not a bad is, is not a big deal to me. So if Deb says uh, and even before Deb, Eric was like, hey, we're going to put you in front of the media. I don't get intimidated. I did this myself for a long time. So so honestly, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? You know, get somebody perspectives other than the head coach. And like you, you ask some questions. So maybe somebody other than the head coach can answer it. <laughs> we'll take two more, one from Ryan and we'll finish up with Larry. Hey, uh, Bruiser, Ryan, Ryan Black here with the Louisville Courier Journal. Um, I, I was curious, you know, we, we kind of all know how difficult this season has been for, for Damian, you know, with just all the unfortunate off the court stuff. I guess what is as one of his coaches, what has that kind of been like going through this experience with him, as well as maybe seeing just the positives in terms of the, the confidence he's gained as the season has gone on? I think Cal has done an unbelievable job with him in terms of not trying to rush him back, letting him take his time. Uh, you know, when you're you're ready to come and try to help us, you know, you you, you just come and try to help us. Uh, it was a tough situation for him, you know, tough, it was very emotional. I mean, and listen, I, I lost my dad and I was a coach uh, when I was a head coach and I know how tough that was for me. So I can just imagine what it was for him as a player, being away from home, uh, being in school, you know, being here and, and, and finding him the way we did. Uh, but I thought Cal's been very patient with him. He hasn't put any pressure on him to, hey, we need you to do this or that and the other. He let the kid do it on his own time. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're starting to see the results we're starting to see with him. Uh, nobody pushed him to, to get back faster or, or do what we do. We, we put it at his time. And I think he's done a great job with that. And the kid is starting to play a lot better and playing with a lot more confidence. Finish this out, Larry. Yeah, Bruiser, I've been covering Kentucky for a pr pretty long time now. And, and this has been such an unusual season with some really high highs and some really kind of low lows. As a coach, how do you kind of help your players get through that when you look at the fan base and they're up and down, you know, so excited, so depressed? How do you make sure players don't get caught up in any of that? Well, Kentucky is one of those places that the fans do get really high and really low. But as a coach, you just try to keep your players on the same message. John Calipari, that's his specialty. You know what I mean? Keep keep everybody on the same message. Uh, keep looking forward. Uh, he really talks about, you know what I mean, the outside noise, because you get a lot of it here. Uh, but I think he does a great job of just keeping everybody on the same message. So 
when the fans are on a high, high and low, low, we try to keep the players pretty much even keel uh, or just trying to pro- make sure they we keep progressing. Uh, that's the most important thing right there. So uh, we like we as a as a, uh, a staff and I guess we as a, as a team, we don't really get in. To, we don't get into the roller coaster emotions like everybody else does. If you do then you're going to lose a lot more games than you're going to win. You're not going to be able to, you know, we've had a, some unfortunate things in terms of our uh, uh, our injuries and things like that, where we had to make a lot of adjustments. And I think our kids have handled it great. So uh, for us, if you have the emotional highs and lows as the fans, you're never going to win. All right. Well, thank you, Coach Bruiser. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Appreciate your patience and flexibility to do this virtually today.